This is the Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the Lost Colony in Roanoke, it's the Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Amanda. Nadine. Megan. Uh, and tonight we want the French film Raw. Yep. Uh, yucky. It, n- not good. <laughs> I am going to give it... I'm going to give it a lot of the benefit of the doubt. Just Oof. that it was bad translation, differences in culture. I'm going to give it two sibling fingers out of five. It is quite generous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted to give half a finger. Yeah. Just because I feel bad giving no fingers at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just really was not my cup of tea. No. Like, at all. One sibling appendage. <laughs> it was so gross. Mm. What a time. So, we're in North Carolina, Roanoke Island, to visit the Lost Colony. And so Nadine is going to give us the, the history of the area so we know what we're talking about. Yes. Okay. So essentially, the Lost Colony of Roanoke was a colony where Governor John White was in charge of it. They landed with over 100 colonists, which was a mix of men, women, and children, and unborn children that weren't even there yet. And they landed on Roanoke not intentionally. They were supposed to be going to the Chesapeake, where Jamestown is, the successful colony. (laughs) And the captain of the ship was just like, no, it's, it seems late in the summer. You guys seem fine here. Best of luck to you. And just left them, basically. And John White had already been to Roanoke before. He had come on an expedition with, like, Sir Walter Raleigh, which was basically when he was like, this is not the place that we want to be. The people who had been at Roanoke already was a bunch of military people who were living in a fort there and they had like really burned their bridges with the Native Americans like Mm. taking a bunch of their food and they just kept like mooching off the Native Americans but then they accused the Native Americans of stealing from them okay (laughs) and then they you know like you do when someone steals from you they massacred a bunch of them Uh, yeah seems a bit uh bit much. A little aggro. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Insane. Literally decapitating the chief and sticking his head on a spike at the front of their fort. So John White wasn't exactly hyped to have that be where they were left, you know, since he had brought his daughter and his Uh unborn granddaughter (laughs) with him on the expedition and his son-in-law to establish this colony. But that's where they get left. So they try to have a good outlook on it. But even like the abandoned fort that they find and stuff, when they get there, there's literally like bones left there. And the way that the bones are left is in like a skull and crossbones type way, Mm -hmm. like in a way where it's kind of a signal. To, uh, Mm. Yeah. From the people who killed them probably to be like, dude, you're not welcome here. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sure that they were, like, trying to keep it optimistic. He was like, everything's going to be fine. Like, those people, they didn't treat the Native Americans right. So we're just going to act better and it's going to be better. But, you know, they started to worry that maybe they weren't welcome there. And there Mm -hmm. was a guy, George Howe. He went off by himself and then was later found with 16 arrows Mm -hmm. and a caved-in skull (laughs) from a wooden club. So I would say around that time was when they were like... Well, pretty uh, sure we aren't welcome. They started running low on provisions, and so they had arrived in 1587, but it was, like, pretty early in that they sent their governor, John White, back to England to get more supplies. Unfortunately, he lands in England, and the Spanish Armada has started coming in, and Queen Elizabeth is like, no, we're going to war, so you can't leave. We have no provisions for you. In fact, we need your help Stay here. And so he ends up not being able to come back to the colony for three years. Mm-hmm. It isn't until 1590 that he can come back, and he actually arrives back here on August 18th, 1590, which just happens to be his granddaughter, Virginia Dare's birthday, who is the first English child to be born in America. One thing that just cracks me up in general about this is I love that people call it like the oldest mysterious cold case in North America and I'm like Mm -hmm. about white people. I will say we have spent all day listening to this stuff like we've we've had it told to us a million different times and I mean and I had already researched it so we're a little tired of this. Does anyone want to guess how many days the crossing took from the Atlantic to get there? Three months. Six months. 
uh, 76 days. So close to yours. Let's see. So when John arrives back, he sees that the like village that they had set up is basically gone. The colony is really not there. Like the houses are gone. They had these like treasure tests basically where they had put like valuables and then buried them to keep them safe. Those are pulled up and like some of the stuff is pulled out of them, but weird stuff is left behind like weapons and jewelry, like valuable stuff that mm -hmm. if you were pillaging, you would take. Uh, but things like books and paintings and stuff are taken. Uh, and on a tree is carved C-R-O, which everyone basically generally assumes stands for Croatan, which is one of the tribes that is down at Cape Hatteras. Well, at least what modern day is now Hatteras Island. It is south, essentially, which is not the direction that they would have wanted to go ideally, but it is where people would be the kindest to them, probably. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I saw at the Lost Call Museum thing that we were at that they had the carved tree with CRO, but also there was a second. A post, yeah. Yeah, with the Croatoan actually written Fully out. Written out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they say. I will okay. say, I've seen the account both ways, oh. and since it's just written from like John White, basically. Oh. So. I I don't think it's like, I personally don't think it's impossible that he just in some of his writings referred to it as Croatan because he had so much assumed that, that then people mm. started thinking that both were written, mm. I think is possible, okay. but I don't know. But yes, yeah, on the fence, whatever they have, I, they don't call it a fence. The, but the thing around the fort, right? Yeah, one the of thing the around the fort. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that is interesting is that at Hatteras with the Croatan tribe in the early 1700s, John Lawson came there and he noticed that people in the tribe had which I will say the guy that we dealt with today who we could not stand he had an insane amount of ear hair like shocking so much. shocking what amount is, of ear hair the scariest thing I've seen in a long yeah, time which that's not what we disliked about him but it was just present but it was his attitude he, he just had a he, weird he was attitude giving, like British sympathizer vibes yes, like yes. he was definitely like but they were savages <laughs> Loki uh, that's what he was giving like I okay, did not did not care for him. Yeah, we didn't like him. But one thing that he said is he kept saying light colored eyes and brown hair. Mm -hmm. I never saw that anywhere. I saw blonde hair and blue eyes, and blue eyes. Yeah. Um, yeah. which makes a big difference because being albino actually is way more common among Native Americans oh, than among so. the general population. Really? Yeah. That's and interesting. Yeah. So it makes a big difference as far as like if they had brown hair and light colored eyes, then sure, you'd be like, oh, it seems maybe some European blood got in here. When albinism presents in humans, do they have the red eyes? No. Do they go blue? It's, yeah, that's actually a myth that okay. I, I had also like thought that I had heard that. And so I looked it up. And well, I just know in like a lot of other animals, they're not considered yes. albino unless they have red eyes. Yes. In other animals that happens, it, no albino human has red eyes. I see. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. They either have blue or brown. Okay. But yeah, but I, because I also was not sure about that. So I did specifically look it up. I don't know. I don't know how. How does it pop up? You mean like. Yeah. And like how, it? like, so if an albino human has a family, like how likely are their children to be albino? So, cause like if it's a small community or tribe and they're having families, there's probably more. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's a, it's a recessive gene. Mm -hmm. So you have to get it from both parents okay yeah. when he went and saw this like light eyes light hair they also had english clothes and new english words and people that are like even now living in the area where it was originally settled use several of the last names that people in the establishing colonists had oh, like yeah. dare barry bishop brown and many of them claim to have mixed native american ancestry so who knows um the other thing that we probably should talk about real quick is um there are these what are called the dare stones so in the 1930s like in the great depression Someone said that they found a stone that seemed like it was written by Eleanor Dare, John White's daughter. And in it, it like basically talked about the death of her husband and her daughter. That stone was found in North Carolina. And then like 47 more stones were supposedly found okay. in Georgia. It's generally accepted that these are all fake, basically. Uh, it, it feels... 
Yeah, it's, it doesn't it, feel believable. It also feels like something that you would do... During the Great Depression. Th- during the 30s. You're like, I need money. Yes. What do people love? Exactly. <laughs> what do people love? <laughs> yeah, what are people no. interested in? People yeah. are... Just so you know, people are obsessed with Virginia Dare. Yeah. It's weird. Oh, that is interesting. But so the only one that there is, like debate about really is that the first one there are some people who say that the first one is real i don't understand why currently today not enough tests have been run on it to conclusively say one way or the other kind of blows my mind Mm. but then i think about like that thing that we watched about the salamander guy and it's Uh like I mean, sometimes when someone's a good forger and they just happen to... Because it's not like that guy was really that smart. Who knows yeah. why he just happened to really understand a way to do that that was so hard to detect. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I doubt that any of them are real, personally. To me. Yeah. The other thing that some people think is that they went way north. Because let me tell you, we've made the drive in a normal vehicle and it is very far from here to Jamestown. <laughs> like, it's not close. But so some people think they went all the way up to like Powhatan to where that tribe was mm-hmm. and uh, intermingled with them. And then some people think that they went 50 miles inland basically. Uh, that's the thing where on the map how it has the little piece covered and that it seems like there's a fort there. What else is interesting about that is they covered it up, but also that little fort symbol is drawn on the top with invisible ink too. So it's, it's under there. And so the reason that they probably did that is to conceal it in case any Spanish spies saw the map Mm. because, you know, the Spaniards were also colonizing there. And if they knew that there was a British colony, they would have been like, "Mm -mm -mm, Mm. our America. They've been pirating our stuff. (laughs) The whole reason they came out here was to steal from us. So they're dead. You can't steal this land. We already stole this land. (laughs) Yeah, you're stealing the gold that we stole. (laughs) But here's what I do think is interesting. And, okay, John Smith said this, so who knows how real it is or not. But he said that the Powhatan chief, when he was there, told him that there remaineth there four men from, essentially, Roanoke. It's not spelled that way. But who moved, like, from that area. I'm not going to even try to pronounce it. But that is just, like, very casually written as a notation on a map that John mm. Smith did. So... I mean, that makes it seem a little bit more... That it it's does, just like, yeah, because like, it just whatever. seems weird, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem like something he would just, like, make up, and it doesn't seem like he cared about it. Yeah. So who knows? So, but essentially, those are, like, the... Th- three generally accepted options. There are some people who say that they were abducted by aliens. Mm, <laughs> Obviously, there's no reason to believe that no, particularly, it, but sure. It makes no sense, but I love it either yeah. way. <laughs> I would say that to me, for sure, the most likely one is just that they went to Hatteras to be with mm. the Croatan. Like, uh, that makes far in a way the most sense to me. I guess it's not impossible that, like, a small number of them went north yeah. to where Powhatan would be. I mean, did you see any theories about, like, just the Spanish coming and just murdering them? Not really. Because I will say, where like, where Roanoke is, you wouldn't see, like, they they would have to have known to go there. Like, they wouldn't have just found them. They wouldn't Mm -hmm. have just happened upon them. I mean, what if the Spaniards caught a privateer? Yeah, maybe. It's not impossible. Where are you all? I will say personally too, which like, I mean, I, it doesn't like match up with like John White's thing or anything. And especially since like the houses were like just completely gone. But in my mind, I'm like, hurricanes also happen a lot on yeah, this it's side. It's been three like, years. Yeah. It had been three years. Those are like, like barrier islands. They're like going to get wiped out. Yeah. So I don't know. I know it's hard because it seems like there were so little clues left behind. It's like uh, definitely a massacre didn't happen on site on the Roanoke Island where the colony was originally because I think like that's part of the thing right the three years later is that John White didn't see any evidence of certain outcomes being yeah. possible mm-hmm. but that's not to say like a massacre didn't happen after they attempted to leave for sure while they were on their way or a hurricane you know or that a these... massacre happened and then they just cleaned it up you know yeah. like that or a hurricane yeah, cleaned exactly. it up yeah even. exactly yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Who knows? That's essentially the important parts of the history of it. Wow. Yeah, we'll probably never know. I think probably they just died. You think? Yeah. So you don't think that they mixed with any of the Native American tribes? I think probably a lot of them were probably too racist. 
And then the Native Americans just not liking them because of the abuse they had suffered previous. And then, I don't know, the guy who we talked to at the place kept was like, they were survivors. I was like, I don't know if they were survivors. Yeah, this, is, this is a whole other ball game. This isn't the paved streets of England. Yeah. This is the wild. So. I will say, though, I mean, I'm sure that lots of them were racist and bigoted and stuff <laughs> like that. But it only takes, like, one person finding another person attractive and then suddenly... <laughs> Look out. You know, yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we got a blonde baby over here. Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, so that brings us to me and the ghost stories of the area. So the one, the only one that I found that's really linked to the Lost Colony is the story of Virginia Dare. So like I said, people around here, like especially early Americans up until like the 30s and stuff, obsessed. Obsessed with Virginia Dare. They have this idea of her, like, angel, like, almost type figure. Like, it's so weird. There's, like, things that are branded by her, like, cigarettes and mm -hmm. things like that. There's also white supremacy groups that use her as a yuck, symbol. Yuck, yuck. And a lot of times she's depicted as a full-grown, beautiful woman. Just like the statue we saw. Yes. Yeah. Gross. Even though she was a baby. Yes. Yeah. The only thing she did was be born. Yeah. If anything, her mom deserves more credit for yeah. surviving birth. Talk about Eleanor. In a new world that she's never been in before where the only people who could help her were the people that she came with and who even knows what kind of experience they had birthing children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would hope that they're bringing a, uh, at least a, a midwife type professional with them on the voyage that can, yeah, that are able to assist with that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you would hope. I, I'm not saying it's, it's happening, but I would think that if you're making long voyages like that, part of the necessary people needed to be a part of an expedition mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that is like some kind of doctor type person. Yeah. Or people. Man, you know, a lot of times too, when they talk about like the colonists coming here and stuff and they're like, think of the clothes they wore. In my mind, I'm like, I wonder if they were really wearing those clothes. I mean, I get that they wore those clothes in their society, but once they got here, I wonder if they were. Yeah, like, I, you're like, oh, this is a mistake. Yeah, and if no, yeah, you know, and if, yeah, I feel like I would definitely. They're like, hear you, hear you. We're passing this new law, <laughs> and if you want to wear your underclothes all the time, that's a okay. Yeah. <laughs> Decency's out the window. Man, that was such a creepy statue, though, because to have mm -hmm. a statue of, again, the only thing you know about her is that she had a little tiny baby, mm -hmm. and then make a statue of a naked grown woman. Yeah. Very creepy. Okay. But anyway, so here is the, it's more of a legend than a ghost story, really. So it's believed that she, she did grow up into adulthood or young adulthood and that she grew up with the, the Croatoan tribe. And it said that she was very beautiful. Of course. Of course. Of course. She couldn't have been ugly. Yeah. Impossible. If she were, we wouldn't care about her. Mm -mm. We'd be like, who? Yeah. We'd be like, mm, <laughs> I don't know her. But so she's very beautiful. She's got a lot of suitors. Everybody wants some. And apparently there was a native doctor who was in love with her, just like had to have her. And she was like, no, thank you. And this made him really angry. And so he transformed her into a white doe. Doe? Like a deer. Oh. Doe, a deer, a female deer. Oh, I thought you were making bread. No, but the, they have names, but I'm not going to put he, names. He's a doctor, right? Is he also a warlock? Well, like. I know. How is he doing This that? is probably an English tale because he's like a native, oh, oh native, got you of the the Croatoan tribe. Oh, okay. So, and so the chieftain of the tribe is also in love with her. Oh, yeah. And is desperate to turn her back into a human. So he goes to get like tips from I guess other, you know, native magic peoples, and they tell him. I've heard this two different ways, but they tell him, in this story, the one I like best, is they tell him to get a pearl-tipped arrow made, mm. and it would turn her back into a human once it pierced her heart. <gasps> it's kind of no big, big swing. Then I like the idea of a pearl-tipped arrow, though. It just sounds cute. It sounds pretty. I know. I would like a necklace like that. And then there, but there was another guy who just really wanted to kill the magical deer. For why? It's like a trophy. I don't uh, know. No. Prowess. People Ugh. just like to be killing stuff. Yeah. So he made a silver-tipped arrow. No! So both these dudes are out there looking for her. Poor and, and apparently, they both shoot her at the same time. Of course. Both arrows pierce her heart. She turns into a human only to die in her lover's arms. Dang. 
Wait, so did she love the chief then, do you think? Uh, supposedly, I guess, maybe. I don't know. But to this day, people have reported glimpses of a white doe in the forest, only for it to disappear into thick brush. Mm. I mean, sometimes there are ghost albino deer. deer. Cute little albino deer. This is a ghost deer. It's ghost probably the same maybe. as the natives <laughs> that they were like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've also heard the story where it was just like, there's only one guy, silver-tipped arrow. He shoots her in the heart, she turns back, but she does die. Oh, so sad. Sounds like loose lose. Anyway, either way, she winds up dying. There's a few other ghost stories for the area we were in. There's Mantova's Roanoke Island Inn. A man named Roscoe Jones haunts the landmark. He was the former owner of the inn and a member of the Wilson family, which I guess is a prominent family. He was also the postmaster of the town. And until he received his notice that he was being let go by the Postal Service. And he was super humiliated after that. And he became really reclusive and would never really leave his house. And then long after his death, local residents spotted a ghost man in a postal uniform leaving and entering the front door of the building on a fairly regular basis. The other haunted building, which we passed, they're showing Caddyshack tonight if anyone's interested. The theater. Yeah, it's the Pioneer (laughs) Theater, built in 1918. Apparently it's been owned by the same family the whole time. Wow. Wow. Yes. That's what I was like, that's crazy. People Impressive. do not live, leave here. And so they broadcast movies each night, 12 months out of the year. Some Islanders believe that the former family members still haunt the old movie theater. Yeah. They say that the ghosts really don't like cell phones. Their cell phones aren't allowed in the theater, but they say if you do have one and you have it out, it's not uncommon for it to get slapped out of your hand. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I like that guy. It's a sassy ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah, I'm into like, it. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> You're Respect the, the arts. That's right. <laughs> but those are my ghost stories. Interesting. Ah, that's nice. I am surprised that there aren't like anyone claiming to like have been at the Lost Colony and been like, and the scary thing happened. I or, know. Like, I I couldn't find anything. I mean, I probably could have looked harder, but that's what you want to hear. I did look, and that was like all I really found was the the yeah. ghost story of the Lost Colony. There's like. Everyone's just like, well, it's lost. Yeah, that does seem That's the spooky part. Who cares yeah. about the ghosts? Yeah, that's fair. I know, I will say, when we went today, there wasn't, like, a creepy vibe or anything. No. I think it helps that they have not found mm. the colony. I think it would be different if you were going to, like, a ghost town type vibe. Yeah. You know, like, if you were actually... If you knew he got to the town and was still, like, there and pristine, but it was yeah. just, like, a huge graveyard of people. Yes, yeah. Or, well, like, if we could actually go to the actual spot. Like, mm-hmm. if we could see the little fortress and stuff, I think it would be different. Mm-hmm. Have a different vibe. Interesting. Well, we haven't seen any ghost deer yet, but we haven't left all the way. Yeah. We're also sad we didn't get, we're not going to be able to see the play tonight. Very sad. Uh, but it's good. The Lost Colony of Roanoke. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Scary Movie Clubcast and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. See you next movie night, and don't forget... There are 28 days until Halloween. Bye. 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 Live from the clubhouse, it's a scary... Nope. No, I was like, is this not the time we would do Roanoke Island? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Nope. But I do wish that we could have seen the costumes. We wandered into what turned out to be an administrative building, and, uh... We, there was some cool stuff in there that we would have been able to look around in. Displays. But yeah. I know. It seemed like they wanted us to look, but no. Some voice came out of an office and basically told us to leave. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, we're about to get told to leave. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you're so freaking hot.